and turn to face your bride. right there that's perfect if you'll give your escort a hug if you'll go shake his hand please sir thomas bring your beautiful bride up here oh yeah pass the hands that's beautiful if you'll turn and face each other if y'all can help us pull that train around just a little bit please if you'll turn and hand your bouquet to this beautiful lady, you don't have enough things to do there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Kristen, you look beautiful. You're welcome. <laughs> I come prepared. Uh, Kristen, this is your day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> I'm. As a reverend, I'm not going to repeat what's on that little note. <laughs> That's all right. Keep your stuff together. There we go. <laughs> but you do look beautiful. This is your day. This is your moment to shine. And you do. Shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> Thomas, you look okay. <laughs> when we were standing in there getting ready to come out, I thought, wow. To be that good looking just one day in my life. What a handsome groom and beautiful bride. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. We've been invited here to witness and to celebrate the uniting of this man and this woman in matrimony. Kristen and Thomas are taking their first steps of their new beginning, their new life together. The ability and desire for one human being to love another is perhaps the most precious and fulfilling gift that we have been entrusted with. It's an all-consuming task. 
and a lifelong endeavor. The journey we've been preparing for all our lives. Loving someone is a reason to stretch beyond our limits. To become more for the sake of the other. It's to look into the soul of your beloved and accept what you see. Loving is the ultimate commitment which challenges humans to become all that we were meant to be as they join in marriage today. I have said Kristen and Thomas, I would be remiss if I didn't say Kiki and Strick. <laughs> as they stand here before you today announcing to the world all the challenges that marriage brings, they accept it with open arms. One of my favorite authors once wrote, <clears throat> if love is not all, then it is nothing. This principle and its opposite collide down all the years of my breathless tale. And for the two of you, your breathless tale is about to begin. If love is not all, then it is nothing. It's opposite. If love is all, then it is everything is going to be the basis for every aspect of your relationship. All you have to do is simply love one another. And that love shows through in everything you do for one another, and more importantly, how you treat each other in good times and in bad. Love isn't just a word, it's an action. Love isn't something you just say. More importantly, it's something you do. Love is genuine and honest and open, compassionate and kind, passionate and blind. Love doesn't know space or time nor look through jealous eyes. And in the modified words of Paul in his epistle to the Corinthians, love bears all things, it believes all things, it hopes all things, and endures all things. And the last part that he wrote, love never dies. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would please let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for this joyous occasion. Thank you for your light that has entered into Kiki and Strick's life. Thank you for all the miracles and blessings. Father, I ask that you bless this union. Help Kristen and Thomas find the perfect place in this world for their love to flourish, to let the radiant light light of their love shine on those around them. May all their future creations be blessed. I pray that you bless them with the inner gifts of trust, compassion, forgiveness, and truth, that they may live and grow together in love and peace. You can say amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this love that you see before you today is something that comes along from time to time. And when it clicks and when it happens, as it did in this relationship, you just have to stand back at all and say, wow, they found it. They have found the one that is theirs. For those of you that do not know this love story that brought us to this moment, from that very first time of looking across to some dating, to that moment of yes, to this moment of yes, it has a title. Thomas dubbed it, Love Upon a Fairway. <laughs> a disc golf fairway. <laughs> they uh, briefly met many years ago through their mutual interest of disc golf and competing in tournaments. Years gone by, their paths crossed again, once more through disc golf. They decided to take the time to get to know one another, seeking friendship, but ended up finding love. They quickly fell head over heels, and in 10 months into dating Thomas, Yes, Strick, took Kristen, also known as Kiki, out to the private disc golf ranch where they had met once before after so many years. But at this is where it turns into what could be a, a beautiful book or a movie. He surprised her by popping the question with the sun setting over the pond by their cabin as they sat on a blanket sharing a bottle of their favorite wine Zinfandel thousand stories. They spent the remainder of that weekend celebrating their engagement and playing disc golf with their friends, 
at one of their favorite tournaments. That tournament was called Love is in the Air. It's a couple's doubles event. They continue to attend this tournament each year, celebrating that special moment in their lives. At the very beginning of this ceremony, the bride and groom wanted to take just a moment to recognize and to honor those that have passed on before us. They cherish these individuals for helping to shape their lives, feed their character, and help them in all the ways to become the beautiful couple you see here before you today. Thomas would especially like to remember his mother, Nancy Rockwell, his dad, Jay Rockwell, and his father, Roland Strickland. Kristen, for someone that she said she loved very much and was such a big part of her life growing up, her grandfather, Herschel Womack. For these and all the other departed, would you pause for just a moment in warm remembrance? Thank you so much. As I mentioned briefly earlier, ladies and gentlemen, this moment is brought to you by love. Thomas, do you remember that very first time, the first time you laid eyes on her and thought, wow, who's that girl? <laughs> and for you, that very first time you laid eyes on him and thought, potential. <laughs> so that led to some dating and some more dating and more dating and love began to blossom and begin to grow. That led to an engagement and ultimately led us to this moment, standing before your family and friends. For the two of you, this day can seem to rush by. There's so much going on. Is it raining? Is it not raining? Do I get to do it down there or up here? I, I've dealt with that and you, you, you're a trooper. <laughs> Don't let this moment pace by. Just take a moment, look at each other and remember this moment in time. I know things have been rushed today and been a bit chaotic, but take just a moment. Now take a moment and look out at your family and friends. Folks, give them a wave. These are the people that love you and support you. And they say, Kristen and Thomas, we don't care if it's raining, lightning, thunder, we're gonna be there. And they're all here for the two of you. Love is an emotion. It has its ebbs and flows. It goes up and down. But what you're doing today I declare is greater than love. For what you're doing today is making a commitment. You stand before your family and before your friends and saying, it doesn't matter what comes or goes. Commitment is greater than love. Commitment is that steady line. It doesn't waver. It doesn't matter what my emotions are. We made a commitment before God that this is it. I have found the one. I honor you for making that commitment today. And, and sincerely, I'll tell you, there have been times in my 24 years of marriage that I've looked at my beautiful wife and go, I love you. And then I've had to take a walk. And, and not, outside, not out loud, but to myself, I said, commitment, commitment. I made a commitment. And that's so important. Tantamount with commitment is compromise. I'm sure the two of you have never had an argument, <laughs> never had a disagreement. But if you did, she was right, right? <laughs> Hoorah! <laughs> yes. And the fact that you're having this beautiful ceremony today with your family and friends doesn't change the situation that there may be a life decision and you don't see eye to eye on it. Maybe a job opportunity or a family decision. That's where compromise is so important. Sitting down, talking the things out with each other. There's no doubt of the love that's so obvious between the two of you that commitment that you're making today and the willingness to compromise, you guys are gonna be successful without a doubt. Whenever it comes to vows on the wedding day, we always start with the groom. That way you put all of your cards on the table before she commits to anything. <laughs> so sir, as you look at your beautiful bride, if you would repeat after me. I, Thomas, take you, Kristen. I, Thomas, take you, Kristen. To be my wife. To be my wife. I will love you. And stand by your side. Stand by your side. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. For all of my days. For all of my days. And you, Kristen, as you hold your groom by the hand, if you'd repeat after me, I, Kristen, take you, Thomas. I, Kristen, take you, Thomas. To be my husband. To be my husband. To stand by your side. To stand by your side. In sickness and in health. 
sickness and in health. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. For all of my days. All of my days. And with these words, sir, I understand you have a ring for your beautiful bride. If you would take that ring, please. If you would place that upon her left hand. And repeat after me. With this ring, with this ring, I marry you. I marry you. And I bind my life to yours. And I bind my life to yours. It is a symbol. It is a symbol of my eternal love. Of my eternal love. My everlasting friendship. My everlasting friendship. And the promise of all my tomorrows. And a promise of all my tomorrows. And you also have a ring for your groom. If you would take that, please, and place that upon his left hand. And repeat after me. With this ring. <laughs> with this ring. I marry you. I marry you. And I bind my life to yours. And I bind my life to yours. It is a symbol. It is a symbol. Of my eternal love. Of my eternal love. My everlasting friendship. My everlasting friendship. And the promise of all my tomorrows. And the promise of all my tomorrows. So beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen this, if I can ask the best man and the maid of honor. Your hands are not full enough. If y'all come right out here, please, just for a moment. If you'll take that and kind of get it organized. While they're doing that, ladies and gentlemen, Kristen and Thomas have chosen to memorialize this day with a hand fasting ceremony. This goes back thousands of years. Back in the day, there were not a lot of cathedrals or churches around. So couples, when they decided that they had found the one they wanted to be with, you can go ahead if you'll put both of your hands in there. There you go. If you would begin to tie that, please. This is where the famous thing of tying the knot comes from. For thousands of years, couples, even if there was not a synagogue nearby, they would gather in a field, a beautiful place such as we have here this day, and they would take whatever they had, ribbon or rope. That's perfectly fine, just like that. Thank you, you may return to your places. That's all right. It was not always, well, don't cut, don't cut the blood off. I think, I think Kristen had mentioned something about the uh, maid of honor tying knots and <laughs> maybe didn't want them to get away. So this moment here, that's joining here, this echoes through centuries of time. And it becomes true and present on this day. The couple has decided to tie this knot, symbolizing the binding together. What was two, today becomes one. What were individual decisions now become two. This tying of the knot from European traditions to this present day in the beautiful hill country. Kristen and Thomas, this cord is a symbol of the connection between your two lives. As your hands are bound together by this cord, so too we pray Will your lives be bound together in marriage? If you would look at your hands, please. These are the hands that will love you. These are the hands that will hold and comfort you through the years. These are the hands that will give you support and encouragement. These are the hands you will work and will bind together, that you'll create with, that you'll use to build a life together. The knots of this binding earth not formed by these cords, but instead by your vows that you have made to each other, the promises you make in your hearts and uphold each day through your actions. Remember, you hold in your hands the making or breaking of this union. These are the hands that even old and wrinkled with age will still be reaching for yours with love and compassion. Sir, if you'll come and grab these cords by the top, please, if you'll slide your hands out, keep those just like that and please return here. They are gonna take this cord that was bound here this day and place it a prominent place in their home. As often as they look at it, they'll remember this day and the promises they made and they'll remember you. For the two of you having stated your vows of love and faithfulness to one another, having announced in front of your family, in front of your friends and before God that you choose to live together as husband and wife, in accordance with the laws of the great state of Texas, I now pronounce you legally married husband and wife. Sir, you have kissed this lady as your girlfriend. You have kissed her as your fiance. Now for the first time, you may kiss your wife. If 
you'll turn and face your family and friends and take your bouquet back, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Strickland. Okay, hell you got me drinking. Woo! Woo!